Prior to the break, Ned was telling us about their facility and what goes into building an A-liner camping trailer. But I was wondering, who is a typical A-liner owner? We divide our customers sort of into three big categories. Uh, the first category is actually people with tent campers uh, that are trading their tent campers in and going to an A-frame. So they like the idea and all the benefits of a small pop-up camper, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, primarily driven by a space. Kids are gone, so they don't need the large opening beds that a uh, traditional tent pop-up offers, and so they're trading in their tent camper for an A-liner. Uh, the second, actually, uh, big group of people that we get are people trading in large RVs. Um, so they probably started with a tent camper back in their 20s, migrated to a travel trailer, then a fifth wheel, and somewhere along the way realized that uh, the most fun they ever had was back when they had the pop-up without the hassle of the big 30-footers. And they're trading in their big travel trailer to downsize to an A-liner. Uh, and then the third category of people we get are people who have never owned any sort of traditional RV or tent camper in the past, um, but have been tent campers, meaning uh, on the ground type pop-up tents their entire life uh, and they're ready to, to get up off the ground and enjoy something a little bit more uh, warm and drier. Now let's head out into the plant and see just what goes into building an A-liner. Every A-liner starts off with a powder coated frame. As Ned explained, it may cost more, but it's durable, long-lasting, and easy to clean. At this department, the frame starts off upside down. And all the wiring, hoses, stairs, and jacks are installed. Once that's complete, the axles and the tires are put on and it's ready to roll into the fabricating department. The next operation is actually building the lower box unit, and that starts with a plywood floor being positioned on a jib. Next, the linoleum floor is cut and secured into place. Now we're ready to position and install the sidewalls. Once the sidewalls are secured, a jig is put into place to hold them in position prior to the front and back sections being installed. A bead of adhesive is put on the leading edges of the side panels. The front panel is put into place and secured. Followed by the back panel. Now, we have a completed bare box ready to be mounted on the frame. Before all the walls are ready to be installed, they have to be fabricated, and that was done in the lamination department. Each wall panel consists of three separate components. The outer panel, which has that easy to maintain gel coat finish, the center foam panel, and the inner panel with that nice, pleasing textured finish you see in all A-liners. All three layers get a coat of adhesive prior to be putting into a chamber that actually draws a vacuum and presses all three layers tightly together and at the same time ensuring there are no air pockets or uneven spots. Prior to seeing how the walls are fabricated we saw how they assembled the lower box unit. Now it's time to marry that box unit with the frame but first we have to put on a little adhesive. With the unit being so light, four people can easily position the lower box unit onto the frame. Later, we'll see the rest of the operations involved in building an A-liner, and we'll also see how easy it is to set one up. But coming up after the break, Jeff checks out the Dodge 3500 pickup and Jayco Eagle trailer. Don't touch that dial, we'll be right back.